This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Samsung Ative Smart PC Pro 700T. You know Samsung, a lot of words in that title. We just call it the Samsung Ative 700T, not to be confused with the 500T, which is their Intel Atom based tablet with a similar form factor. 11.6 inch display, full to HD 1080p. Wacom Digitizer inside, Intel Core i5, 4 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD. You get the idea, I like the Surface Pro. This basically is an Ultrabook inside of a tablet outfit. 11.6 inches, stayed black casing here. Comes with, in the box, a matching keyboard dock. Transformer style, clips right on. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, finally, the Samsung Ative 700T, Windows tablet with basically Core i5 Ultrabook brains inside. Now we have it inside the included keyboard dock, obviously, and it looks just like your average Ultra Portable, doesn't it? It's pretty boring, to be honest. Looks-wise, it's black, it's plastic, it is what it is. When you look at it this way, you're not going to say, ooh and ah. But this keyboard dock does get the job done, for those of you who need, particularly, well, a lot of typing, a lot of keys. We have a trackpad right here. Not the world's best for multi-touch, but it works. And there was a driver update out we got right out after unpacking the thing and setting it up. That improved stuff somewhat. And there's a release of button right here to release it. A little firm to press. And then there you go. Just the straight tablet. 11.6 inches, as I said. This looks a lot like the Samsung Series 7 Slate that we reviewed not too long ago. Has a little bit more curve going on to the side, and we'll compare those in a minute. Now you can see, for those of you who do own the Samsung Series 7 Slate, that the dock connector has changed. So that means that your old accessories do not work with this guy. These holes right here are for the locator arms that are on the keyboard dock to, well, try to hold it in place. We haven't had much luck with that. We'll talk about that. Little charging port right here. This side we have micro HDMI under a little door. These are our volume controls. Lots more doors up here and buttons. Here we have our power button. This is our screen rotation lock button. Combo microphone headphone jack right here. This is the exhaust vent for the fan inside. USB port right up here under this door right here. USB 3.0 as you can see. Nice and blue. Microphone up here built in. Micro SD card slot under this door, SDXC compatible. If this had 3G or 4G, which it does not, that's where the card would go there. And on this side, nothing going on at all, except for, aha, uh -huh, this is where the pen comes out. So there it is, your S Pen, as Samsung likes to call it. This is basically your Wacom digitizer with pressure sensitivity. Small pen, obviously, not big. They did that so they could actually make a garage or silo for it. A lot of people complain when there's no place to put their pen. So Samsung gave you a small pen has a single clicky button over here, does not have the eraser function up top, obviously. This is interchangeable with other Wacom tablet-friendly pens. We've been using our Samsung Series 7 Slate pen, for example, which is a much nicer pen to use instead. And this is that pen. You can actually still buy this from Samsung, and you can see it looks much more like a mechanical pencil, full size. has the eraser here, has a button on the side, more comfortable to hold. You can also use the Surface Pro pen with this, which looks almost identical to the Samsung Series 7 Slate pen we just showed you. If you take a look at the back, glorious black plastic. Not slippery like the 500T that we looked at. That's the Intel Atom-based version of this tablet. This one, it, well, it's not super grippy either, but it's not as slippery, slick, dangerously slippery as the 500T. So it's black plastic here. A little bit of a, an attempt to make it look like metal, a brush finish you can see there. Also, you can see that it does pick up fingerprints. And these are intake vents over here, and also some passive cooling vents for the motherboard that's inside. Generally speaking, it doesn't get too hot. The fan does not roar. The first day we had it, it was doing a lot of Windows updates, and it did, you know, roar. But don't worry about that. It's done with that stuff, and you're done installing your software. Doing productivity or artwork, it's pretty much quiet. Even watching something like streaming HD videos, fan was near silent on it. Now if you're going to play games or process HD video on this, then you'll hear the fan. One thing to note right here, this is something Samsung's been doing with their Android tablets. So it's a little hard to see, but there are speaker grills facing at you. How brilliant is that? So it's not being muted by the desk or your hands. The bad news is it's not particularly loud. One of my tests is I use this while I use my exercise bike, which is not a very loud machine, and I actually had to use external speakers with this, couldn't hear it, whereas my Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch is plenty loud enough to hear. Go figure. 
here's our Windows Home button, and this is a mechanical clicky kind of button, which I have discovered I really like after using several of these to draw with and take notes with because your hand does not accidentally brush the capacitive button sending you home when you're in the middle of actually doing some work. Front camera here is 2 megapixel. The one on the back is 5 megapixel. Now let's take a look at the dock. Basic black. We've got little light up indicators here for caps lock being on and when the unit is on it lets you know that glows in blue. Trackpad here, reasonable size. Pretty decent keyboard in terms of tactile touch. Obviously it's a chiclet style or island keyboard. Little release latch over here and inside you can see here's the electrical connector that it uses, a little magnetic pin style connector and then little arms that latch into the tablet. From the side you can see we got this plastic kind of prominence barrel hinge here, quite stiff. Although once you put the tablet inside I notice it does wobble a little bit. I'm pretty surprised at that. And the bottom is just more basic black and then these are the little rubber feet to try to give it some grip and there's a little pair of rubber feet up here too to stop it from skidding around much. Pretty effective. This has pass-through charging. There is no battery in here. What was Samsung thinking, right? The ASUS VivoTab TF810C has a secondary battery inside. Of course, ASUS's transformer Androids also have that. The HP Envy X2 we looked at has a secondary battery in here. Particularly with the Core i5, you have some power requirements. It would be nice to have some extra juice in here and it would give it a little more weight. Now, weight's a two-edged sword. Nobody wants a very heavy package, but at the same time, it helps with the balance and not be so tippy because our tablet weighs just under two pounds, and this is 1.6 pounds. This is lighter, therefore, it's going to be top-heavy with a tablet in it. We've got two USB ports, also under doors. Samsung just loves these little doors here. USB 2.0, not 3.0. And that's another little bit of uh, what was Samsung thinking there. Kind of weird, right? And there's another one on this side. Still, we appreciate having those ports, and there's still plenty of USB 2.0 devices. You don't need USB 3.0 for your mouse or something like that, really. There is no HDMI or any other port on this dock whatsoever, so you're going to use the ones that are on the tablet. The nice thing is we have this little cutout over here, so you can access the digital pen. So good job of design there. Now, the bad news is you may have read on forums about keyboard disconnects with both the Ative 500T and the 700T. And this is a 700T purchased retail from a local store because Samsung really doesn't have a review program for this product going. So this isn't something that's been vetted by Samsung first to make sure it works. And my God, constantly we get disconnects. It's not that it falls out of the keyboard dock, but you just hear that connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect to the point where eventually sometimes it blue screens the tablet because it's just losing its mind. It's annoying. You, know, you don't have to barely move it much at all for that to happen if you do have this problem, but it's really annoying if you happen to be using the USB ports for data transfer at the time, and they cut out. So to put it in, it's merely a matter of just lining up the slots here and getting it in. And you heard that happy sound. That means that it's soft and acknowledged the keyboard dock. And it's... You hear that? And we're not really doing much with it. Constantly. Yeah. You see, you really don't have to bounce it around, flop it, or anything like that. Doing this, doing this. Now, the good news is we hear that Samsung is replacing the keyboard dock. The problem is with the dock, apparently, and not with the tablet. So if you do get one and it has that problem, exchange it with your retailer. Hopefully, you'll get a better one, or send it to Samsung, and hopefully, they'll replace your dock. This is as far back as the tablet will tip, oddly enough. It doesn't go too far back, but since this is like really wide viewing angle, PLS, Samsung display, about 178 degree viewing angles, it, it's fairly adequate at that. And it's, it's not too tippy, which is pretty good. We're poking the screen like that. You can see this wobbles around some, though, which is surprising, especially because it's at maximum tippy back. Oh, there. Yeah. And you can hear our keyboard connecting and disconnecting again. We'll just get used to that. So let's take a look at the tablet itself. Here we have the 11.6 inch 1920 by 1080 display. That's certainly a step up if you have a Series 7 slate in terms of resolution. Very nice, sharp, bright, 400 nits of brightness. Color accuracy is pretty good on it. Colors are nice and bright and popping, but they're not psychotic Samsung Super AMOLED colors like you see on some Samsung smartphones, obviously, because, well, it's not a Super AMOLED display, is it? And when it comes to computers, Samsung knows you need more color accuracy than Super AMOLED is going to give you. It's fast, it's responsive, obviously the, the Windows 8 Metro UI is very lightweight, it doesn't require much, but it handles desktop 
very well since it is basically an ultrabook inside and there's our desktop you can see ships with 125 percent scaling by default which i find is a happy medium between seeing more on the screen but not having things be so tiny of course you can set your desktop scaling yourself and the reason that's done is because 1920 by 1080 is a lot of pixels to squeeze into 11.6 inches and the way windows handles scaling isn't like your android or ios tablets where it does things like pixel doubling or pixel quadrupling or whatever it's going to be to make things just look sharper, it actually changes how much stuff you see on the screen. Again, this is an Intel Core i5 ULV CPU. That's a 3317U, 1.7 gigahertz, the same as using the Surface Pro and many Ultrabooks that are on the market. 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM that is not expandable. It has 128 gig Samsung SSD in there. Samsung makes good SSDs, so that's just fine. Some folks have already popped this open and replaced their MSATA drive. It's uh, not the world's most horrible thing to do but mm, I would be you say you have to be pretty geeky to want to do that as dual band Intel Wi-Fi 6235 802 BGN with Intel wide eye a lot of these tablets have not had wide eye so those of you who are in love with wireless display so you can connect your TV with that using the HDMI cable well you'll be thrilled about that Bluetooth 4.0 ours does not have NSC nor does it have a GPS the model that you're going to find in stores for $11.99 in the U.S. does not have 3G or 4G either. Of course, you can use your phone's mobile hotspot feature or use a MiFi. When it comes to synthetic benchmarks, I was a little surprised we didn't see a somewhat higher score. It scored 4,044 on PC Mark 07, and we've been seeing numbers more like the 4657 on the Surface Pro, a little bit higher in the 47 to 4800s for some Ultrabooks and the Sony Vio Duo. I think in part the graphics performance is bringing it down a little bit. Maybe it could use a niftier graphics driver because those numbers are lower than on Surface Pro. You can see our scores right here for the Windows Experience Index, 6.9 for the processor, which is every notebook, ultrabook, and tablet scores that has the CPU, 5.9 for memory, graphics for desktop, 4.5, gaming graphics, 6.2, and the SSD scores an 8.1, which again is what we usually see with fast SSDs on these devices. Now, after we, we set this guy up, Windows Update wanted to install an updated Intel graphics driver. We let it do that, and brightness control stopped working. Oh. So maybe that would have increased our performance, but you've got to have brightness controls. No manner of brightness control worked anymore. So what we did is we used the Samsung software update application that ships with this to download it and save the graphics driver separately. If you just use the, the software update to install stuff, it actually won't overwrite your Intel graphics driver. So that's a pro tip for you guys who have this. Use the software update app to download, save it to your hard drive, run it separately, and you'll get your brightness back, and you'll go back to the original graphics driver that shipped with this tablet. Now, for those of you who have Samsung's Series 7 slate that came out in some summer, late fall of last year, that one had Windows 7, but it was the reference design for Windows 8 for developers. And indeed, you can put Windows 8 Pro in it. That's what we did. And Samsung has all the drivers and the applications and stuff for that, too. So we'll show you the difference. In terms of footprint, you're looking at pretty much the same thing right here. The only thing is you're going to be running at a lower resolution, 1366 by 768 for it the Samsung Series 7 Slate, which is still available at some stores, and really it's about the same price as the new Ative 700T. Go figure, you think this was older. Well, it should be cheaper. In terms of weight, this guy actually weighs a little, a little under a tenth of an ounce less, the Series 7 Slate. Usually these things get lighter rather than heavier, so we're surprised. Thickness for both is a half an inch. Put them sideways so you can see. The Ative has more of a curve to it, so it makes it look thinner whereas we have straight sides on the Samsung Series 7 Slate. And you can see the difference in that dock connector at the bottom and the fact that things will not be interchangeable there as a result. Samsung Series 11, 7 Slate did not have a keyboard dock option. There was a, a bundle that you could get that had a dock, a desktop dock, which was pretty nice. It added wired Ethernet and USB ports, and it came with an external Bluetooth keyboard, which was not exactly as conveniently portable. And in terms of performance, the Samsung Series 7 Slate from last year ran on a second generation Sandy Bridge Core i5 ULV. So you get a performance boost plus the Intel HD 3000 on this versus Intel HD 4000 on our newer model. So more performance here. Now if you already own the Series 7 Slate, is that performance boost worth it to you? Even if you're using something like Photoshop, certainly if you're using Corel Painter, um, ArtRage, 
stuff like that, probably not so much, but if you do intend to process HD video, you really push Photoshop to the max with image editing more so than just drawing inside of Photoshop. Well, it could make a difference to you, sure. And now we have the Samsung Ative 700T with next to the Microsoft Surface Pro. The Microsoft Surface Pro is wearing a touch cover right now, obviously not the type cover with the clicky keys, which would be black and which would look kind of similar to this at first blush. And you can see the size difference because Surface Pro is 10.6 inches. Same internal, same Wacom digitizer, same HD resolution. I, we'll do it separate SmackDown, but I can tell you right now, obviously, it's going to be, do you really want a lot of typing? Do you want that keyboard dock design? Or do you want the portability of the Surface Pro right there? And here's our oh cruel world moment. Samsung right here, and we have the HP NVX2. The HP NVX2 shows you how to do a keyboard dock right. The whole thing is cased in metal, first off, really nice, isn't that? And it's also got ah, a keyboard I find a little bit more usable, a trackpad that's pretty nice as well. Does not disconnect. This, this sucker is really tight when it's on there. Nice design overall, and there's a secondary battery in here. But why is this O'Cruel World? Well, because this is an Intel Atom Dual Core Clover Trail. Not that that's a bad thing depending on your needs if you need really long battery life and you don't need a whole lot of processing power for heavy duty applications, that's just fine. But for those of you who do need the Core i5 power that's in here or the active digitizer with Wacom Pen, because the Envy, well, we still haven't even seen the digital pen for that come out yet. It will be an Atmel pen. So far, those have not been inspiring. So, you graphic artist types and you note taker types, well, the Envy isn't for you, even if you just wish you could take the guts of the Samsung and shove it inside that Envy. And now to do some heavy lifting, we're actually going to try out Skyrim on this. But first I'm going to show you we plugged it into power so we get more performance going. Very compact charger, laptop style charger with two-piece cord. It looks the same as the Samsung Series 7 Slate charger, but different output for amps and for watts. So do not mix them. And you can see that we've dropped it down to 1366 by 768. That's because running at full 1080p, we were getting about 20 frames per second, which really was not a pleasant thing at all. All of our settings are at low. Things like anti-aliasing are off, which is what the game wanted to do. And it left texture quality at medium, and I went with that too, because otherwise, gosh, it's really hard to tell where you're going sometimes. Everything looks so blocky, and because the performance was good enough that, to warrant that. So we'll give it a try now and see how it does. We'll run fraps in the background, so... You can see how it runs. So, so now we're inside Skyrim, again, 1366 by 768 resolution. You can see the frame rates in the upper left corner are pretty good. Certainly it's playable anyway. It's not stellar. It's not you're going to be your gaming rig, this guy, but for a little gaming on the go, it's fine. The frame rates are actually improving as we move, move along here. So that's Skyrim on the Samsung Smart PC Pro Ative 700T. And now we're going to check out video playback. Obviously, this is a capable PC here. Yes, it runs iTunes. Yes, it has Windows Media Player if you want. We're just going to use the Xbox Video Player to test out a 1080p MPEG-4 high-profile trailer. Play natively to the 1080p display. Looks great. Plays great. And you can hear the speaker volume. Move it up to 70% volume. So not super duper loud, but sound quality is pretty good for a small device. So how about pen-based things? Look, it comes with S Note. You people who use Samsung Galaxy Note phones or Galaxy Tab Note tablets are familiar with this already, and I think Samsung threw that in there just so you'd feel like you're at home. You can see you got the same features right here with formula recognition, text recognition, and basic drawing right here. You know, it gets the job done. Certainly, one 